Okay, let's start this section with looking at what are convolutions, which are the basic operations for convolutional neural networks. So convolutions are really about detecting local features. So the early layers in deep neural network find what are called local features. And those are typically patterns like small lines, curves, and edges. And here are some of the types of patterns that typically a first uh, early layer in a neural network or one for image processing would use. What happens because of feature hierarchy is that the subsequent layers will then combine these local features to extract more complex features and eventually some kind of higher level semantic information. And the point though is that these kind of local features can really be anywhere in the image and what that first convolutional layer is trying to do is locate them. The question then is how does it do that? And so that's really a localization problem. We want to find a local, some kind of local feature in an image. So let me illustrate it like this. Suppose I want to find a digit three in some form. So I have some, let's say, picture of a census form, as in MNIST in this case, and I want to locate a digit three. So ideally I want in this case, for example, to locate here are two digits here and here. So how do we do that? Well, one idea is that if you're familiar with signal processing, you will know this as a very classic technique called correlation. But if you have never heard of correlation, that's fine, because I'm just going to explain it to you here. So the idea is really to try to find features by what you would call a sliding window. So let me illustrate. Let's say I have an image. So here's a piece of um, some image with some digits in it and we'll call this image X. This image is typically large. And I want to say I want to find the digits four in this larger image. So what I do is I create a smaller, what's called filter W, and maybe that could be say a size eight by eight. And I want to find this digit four or all the locations of this digit four in this image. So how do I do that? Well, what I do, is I compute something called the correlation, which is given by this expression here. Now, the output of this is it also an image, so it's a, a indexed by J1 and J2. And at each pixel value of the output, it is really just the inner product of this filter with the image starting at that location J1 and J2. Now, what's the reason that you would do this? Well, imagine I take this, uh, I want to compute this uh, output at this location. At this location here, where I take this filter and then align it with that image, this four will have a high overlap with the four in this part of the region. So as a result, in that particular location, this correlation output would be high. On the other hand, though, if I slide that window over here, there's no four in this box. And as a result, this correlation will be low. And so as I slide this correlation around, this window around, I'll get high values only when this filter kind of overlaps with that image well. And in that way, it can kind of detect where that local features are this feature of the four. Now, there's a little bit of terminology that I need to clarify before I go forward. If you are an EE student and you've seen signal processing, or you're a math uh, student, you will hear the term convolution, which is exactly what I wrote before, excepting it has these minus signs. All right, and uh, so if you know this from signals and systems, you will know this as you flip and then slide to um, get the output. So we're going to call this convolution with reversal because of this minus sign. Now, one odd thing, this is not my uh, fault, 
was that in most neural network packages, they call this with the plus sign convolution, even though in reality, or at least the way in signal processing people would call it, it would be called correlation. So that's just something to keep in mind when you hear the term convolution. If you're a signal processing person, don't be confused. They just have this understanding that it has this plus sign. But if you are not familiar with the traditional signal processing use of the term, don't worry. Okay, another little minor point we have to uh, deal with with convolutions or correlations is boundary conditions. So let's say I have um, an image that's n1 by n2, and I, my filter is k1 by k2, and I can compute this sum. The question is, what are the outputs, um, what are the range of outputs for this output? And there's a few different ways that most packages will support. One way is called the valid mode, where I only slide that window over the valid range of the pixels. In this case, I get a smaller output than the input. And I'll show you this graphically next. The second is where I slide it and to get the same output as the input shape, but I have to do some zero pattern for this. And finally, I can zero pattern on both sides and get an output that's larger than the input. So let me illustrate. And there's a really good um, GitHub site here. Remember, all these lecture notes are available on the course GitHub site, and you can uh, click on these links once you, uh, once you download those uh, lecture notes. Okay, so let's say I have a 2x2 two two kernel or filter, and the image is, say, 4x4, four four, so this is a super small image. If I'm doing the valid mode, I can only shift this pixel over this, th this window or filter over a 3x3 three three range. Once I shift it more than this, that window, that green window, would run out of the boundary. So in this case, I would get a 3x3 three three output. On the other hand, if I do the same mode, I could keep on shifting that 3x3 three but to get the same output, I have to take it off the boundaries of the original square. And to do this, I have to assume some values for the image outside the square. And typically, those are assumed as zero. Finally, if I want to get the sort of full mode to get every possible overlap, I would extend it even further and get a higher value like this. And this is called full mode. All right. Um, there's that website, which I just mentioned, also has some very nice GIFs to walk through some computations. So let's just do a couple of these, just so you understand. So in this, here's a 5x5 five five image, and the large numerals are the values of the pixels in the image. And if you look carefully, you'll see in the bottom right are the values of the pixels in the window. So when you slide this to get the first position, you go 3 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 plus 2 and so on. And if you do all the math, it comes out to be 12. The next output value, you take that dark blue window and you slide it over. All right? And then you do the same inner product of those nine elements with the pixel. In this case, it also turns out to be 12. And then you slide it over again and then you slide it down, and so on. And in this is the valid mode, so you can slide this down two more squares on the bottom and slide it two more squares on the right without running over the edge. So in total, you get three by three outputs. And this is, uh, I've just written again the kernel here. All right, so make sure you understand how to do these computations. It's pretty straightforward. Now, I've just done it manually so far. Um, Python has lots of uh, methods to do this. Again, the GitHub site, follow the link, and there's a demo which shows you how all the code, which I'm just going to show you snippets of here, um, if you want to uh, get all the details. 
So I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to do convolutions in Python. I'm going to use a couple of packages. One is skImage, which is an image processing package, and scipy.signal, which does some signal processing. Later, I'll show you how to do this all in TensorFlow. And just to make it concrete, I'm going to pull up a kind of very classical image um, that's used in image processing classes called the cameraman image. This is so widely used, you can actually download it from the SK image pattern. And it's this picture of this man looking into a camera. And I'm going to show you two convolutions. One is on local averaging. The other is one that effectively does edge detection. So let's start. So suppose my kernel is what we would call a uniform kernel. So it's a kernel G, which is all ones, and has some dimension Kx by Ky. And I've just normalized it here so it has an average value of one. Now, if I um, take the inner product of the same con the correlation of G with the image, it's basically going to add up all the values in some region and then divide it by the total number of pixels. So it's really computing a local average of that image. And visually what that corresponds to is kind of blurring the image. So let's just illustrate that. On the left is the original image and the right two images are the output of correlating the original image with this kernel. And you can do this very easily in Python with the correlate 2D command as I've shown here. Now, as you see, if I take a nine by nine uniform kernel, I get indeed get a blurred version of this image. And of course you get more blurring as the kernel size increases because every output is taking into account more pixels in that vicinity. Okay. I want one other thing to show on this is the, is the effect of boundary conditions. So here is um, our image, original image, and I've blurred it with the uniform kernel, but in three different modes, full, same, and valid. And you can do that just by selecting the mode option in Python. And <clears throat> You can see here, if I print the shape, the original was 512 by 512. If I do full, I get an image that's larger than the input. If I do same, it's the same, but valid is smaller because remember it can only move within the boundaries of that image. I also want to look at the boundary conditions. So to do that, I've just plotted here the top left corner. So the original of that image is kind of a gray part of the sky. When you do the full image, you get a large number of black. And the reason is to compute the full correlation, you'll have to start averaging with off the image and averaging a bunch of zeros. And zeros are in uh, black and white images, effectively black. Um, if you do the same, you get the same effect, but less because you have to go off the boundary less. But when you correlate with the valid, then it never has to um, look at pixels outside the image. So you don't get these boundary effects, but it ends up being a little smaller. All right, let's try just another type of uh, filtering, blurring filtering. So in this case, instead of picking a uniform value, I've picked this Gaussian kernel. So it looks kind of the height is proportional to a Gaussian. So it's strongest in the center and then it kind of decays away exponentially with some, uh, with some width. So this blurs the image, but a little differently. So here's our original image. Here's the uniform image. And here's it with a Gaussian kernel. It just blurs it a little less because it's weighting that central pixel more. And as we decay away, we um, don't count those pixels as strongly. But either way, it's really created ca capturing a local average. All right, let's do one more example. 
which is convolution for edge detection. We can do that with what you would call a gradient filter. And in image processing, um, two classical gradient filters are the Sobel filters, and they have this structure here. So the concept is this. If you um, take, the, take an image and you correlate it with the uh, gradient filter and you look at the outputs, a few properties you'll see. For both of these kernels, you, what will happen is that if you can see here, the sum of these values are zero. So if the image is constant in a region, when you take the correlation with this, you will get a zero value. So you'll get a zero value in any region where it's constant. On the other hand, suppose there's a strong decrease in the x direction, and they look at the output of the zx. If there's a strong decrease, what will happen is because this filter has a decrease in this direction, you'll get a strong positive output here which means that if the, you have a vertical edge in the image going from white to black, the zx will be, have a high positive. Similarly, if you have a large um, increase in the edge direction, i.e. going from black to white, then zx will have a large negative value. And zy will have the same, but with edges that are horizontal. So one picks up vertical edges, and the other picks up horizontal edges. So let's just illustrate that here. I can easily create these filters in Python, just manually, and then I can perform the correlate. And if here's the original image, and then I correlate with the X, you'll see you get these strong positive values, that's the white values, when I'm going from white to black. And I get these strong negative values on, on vertical edges going from black to white. And similarly, if I correlate with GY, I get strong positive and negative values on the horizontal edges. Okay, before we continue, I'd like you to go in, open that demo, run that code, and try this little exercise. And in this exercise, I've just created a very simple square, or rectangular image, and I want you to try to construct a filter that will pick up this top right corner and see what results you get.